Okay, so we are now at the uh, Red Rock Canyon area. So we just parked back here in this little parking lot. And now we're going to hike up towards the base of these red rocks here. Um, that we're in the Calico Basin. Um, and so these red rocks are all the Jurassic Aztec sandstone, um, which is a basically uh, fossilized sand dunes because it's a um, because it's a terrestrial deposit. Um, it's oxidized, and oxidized iron is red. Uh, so it's basically tiny hematite particles that are turning that bright red color. And then over here, uh, the top of this mountain, um, that gray patch is the Cambrian uh, Bonanza King formation, which is thrust over the Aztec sands. So there's a contact up there in the middle of that mountain uh, with red below and the gray brown above. And that is the Red Spring Thrust, um, which is part of the severe orogeny. Uh, I don't know, the exact, I don't remember the exact time of that thrusting. Maybe we'll see if I take Shady's talk and you can get from that, but sometime in the mid Cretaceous. Um, and again, the, the Nancy King limestone is Cretaceous, so that's older, being thrust over the younger Cretaceous, uh, uh, Jurassic Aztec stand. So anytime you have old rocks on top of young ones, you know there must be a thrust fault there. And in this case, there are apparently also conglomerates along the surface. So it's interpreted that the top of the Aztec sandstone there was actually an erosional surface um, that was then overridden by the thrust plate. Nice cottonwood tree here. Okay, I better catch up with the class now. There's another good view of the Red Spring Thrust there. Maybe some land art here in the foreground. Maybe we'll get a better view of that one if we get up to a little elevation. Y'all just gotta get onto the outcrop. Now they're up here, you guys can see this beautiful cross bedding with beds going that way here and that way over here. So classic features of a fossilized sand dune. Oh yeah, there is some land art down there. Okay, so let me just talk a little bit about the geology here at our campsite. So, um, first of all, the hills around our campsite here are actually the Triassic Moen Kopi Formation. So that's a series of uh, limestones and shales. Um, and then on top of that, the, the red beds, that we, or the, and the, the red and white sandstones that are in layers over here, these are the same as the uh, same Aztec sandstone we saw um, at our, our last stop yesterday. Um, and so, uh, you know, basically whether they're red or white just has to do with, with fluid flow at a later time, whether or not that leached out the iron. Um, otherwise they're, they're equivalent. And, and those red and white boundaries don't even follow stratigraphic contacts. They're because they are related to later fluid flow. Um, and then above that in, in the spring mountains back that way, you can't really see, um, because it's covered with clouds. If we look over at this part of the spring mountains, um, you can see up above the, the red and white rocks, and there are these more gray colored rocks above them. 
Um, and so you can see actually the contact where we were yesterday, uh, right back there, where there's the bright red rocks and the gray above and that little hill that's not at the top. So that's where we were looking at earlier. So that right there is the, is the uh, red spring thrust. And you can see that over here in the hills and the next hills to the right too with the, with the gray over red. Um, now, if you notice the rocks right above the red spring thrust, they seem to be dipping to the right. Um, uh, and then if you look further back in the mountains way up in the back with the clouds on them, those are, look like they're flat lying. They're actually dipping away from us. Um, but they, you know, they, they look, they're clearly not dipping the same way as the other ones. So those are above that second fault, the keystone thrust, um, which is thought to be the younger thrust that then overrode them. Um, so for those of you guys who have taken my structural geology class, uh, which I'm not sure actually if, I guess probably at least one or two of you must have taken my structural class. I'm not sure. Yeah, there you go. Um, so for the for the plates in the in the and the for the rocks in the red spring thrust plate, can anyone think why they why they might be dipping to the right like that? Note actually over here, um, you can see another outcrop with Aztec sandstone there, and if you sort of trace it over the left, you can if you infer the location of the thrust fault there, that those beds are actually dipping down at about a 30 degree angle into that fault. So what angle of thrust faults form relative to the, the greatest principal compression? 30 degrees. 30 degrees. So if you have horizontal compression and flat layers, thrust faults tend to break at 30 degrees. And they'll climb upwards through the section. Um, so if we have a thrust belt, so the sphere thrust belt, first of all in general, is a series of thrusts that we're moving east. Okay, so those thrusts should have been coming up the section at 30 degrees, so they're dipping 30 degrees to the west. Okay, but then if you imagine the strata that would cut through, the hanging wall of that, you have hanging wall strata coming flat, um, and then they hit the fault dipping at 30 degrees. There'd be an angle there of 30 degrees between the strata and the fault. So here what happens, then you take that and you push that up onto the land, then you're going to have that whole thing is going to be tilted over when it goes over that. It's going to come up this ramp at 30 degrees, and it's going to tilt over onto the ground surface and tilt over 30 degrees. And then you're going to have this panel of rocks that's basically dipping uh, 30 degrees to the right um, as it's being pushed over the land surface. So Basically, the reason it's, it's fairly common in thrust belts to see this, where you'll have, um, you know, strata will be will be dipping uh, at about 30 degrees relative to a you know a horizontal thrust surface. Um, so yeah, that's that. Uh, so yeah, so we'll go ahead and we'll get on the road now.